Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Captain Rye, and today's video comes to us courtesy of Derp Amber. And Derp is playing in the Tier 8 German cruiser, the Admiral Hipster, here in World of Warships. As the battle gets underway, it's Shatter, it's Domination Match Mode, and Derp has spawned closest to the C cap point. So, to start off this battle, that's where he's going to head. Now, if you notice there, he passed by an AFK destroyer. And that's not a particularly good start here for his team, as the enemy team has the destroyer advantage right off the bat, having four of them. But it does look like that destroyer finally got his ass loaded into the game and in gear, and so he is headed off to the C cap point with everybody else. But of course, Derp Amber here in the Admiral Hipster, very far out front for a cruiser, especially a cruiser like this. Now, the Admiral Hipster here, or the Admiral Hipper, to say it correctly, is a reasonably well-protected cruiser, but it doesn't have the best concealment ranges. If you can see there on that mini-map, the dotted dashed line there showing you how far away you will be detected with this ship. Not the best if you're leading the charge, but in this particular case we'll let it slide because there's a lot of large blocking islands in the way. The other point with the Admiral Hipper is that it kinda has, well, a lack of guns here. As we will see, it only has eight eight-inch guns and you kind of have to give a quite a bit of broadside in order to get those rear turrets pointed at the target as well. Now, as Derp pushes up into the sea cap point, enemy Udaloy pops up here, and he is detected there. You can see the number of people who are targeting him, but they're not really going to target him for too long when you consider the fact that he's got an island in the way. At this point, the Enemy team is in the process of capping B. Derp's team is in the process of capping the A cap point. They are going to secure it, and they've already managed to lose one of their very few precious destroyers right off the bat. Not sure what happened to him exactly, but it's not a good situation for their team. This is going to give the enemy team double the destroyer advantage. Plus, that Udaloy back over there is going to cause some problems for his team over here because it's a Russian destroyer and it's annoying the hell out of Derp and everybody else with its volume of fire and fire starting. The bad news here is that they have lost one of their ships. The good news, though, is that they have secured the A cap point, and they're going to secure the C cap point here. And the enemy has pushed up into the A cap point, so they are challenging it, so they're not going to gain that double points advantage here. Not yet, anyway. And as we can see from the number of ships right around the C cap point, it looks like the enemy has pushed over here in force, and whatever went over to the B cap point was probably one of the destroyers. Now, the enemy has pushed into the C cap point, so they're challenging there, so with the exception of the B cap point, nobody is gaining any points, just the enemy team with that one location. And it looks like the team over at the A cap point did not want to challenge the enemy at A, so now the enemy team not only has a points advantage for killing one of their destroyers early on, but they are going to have a double points advantage. Derp is now doing what most German commanders do at this point. He switched over to the armor piercing. German AP, especially German cruiser AP, is particularly good, but it's not necessarily the best option here. Yeah, it's a broadside Missouri, and these shots do do some damage as long as they penetrate, but you can see there, he's got three shatters and a ricochet in those shots. I would honestly continue to fire the high explosive and cause some more consistent damage, as well as set any additional fires whenever possible. Derp does decide that's what he's going to do, so he switches back over to the high explosive there, as a friendly Pensacola is trying to get out and away. Something is detecting him, not entirely sure what can see him, but whatever sees him, that enemy destroyer is in the process of shooting at him. 
Torpedoes coming in there. Those torpedoes coming in from the B cap point again. It's basically going to let you know that there is an enemy destroyer poking around the B cap point. The good news is their team has managed to take out one of the enemy destroyers. The bad news is nobody's in the C cap point anymore to prevent the enemy team from starting its capture. This is where having a bit more of an aggressive team, especially one that wants to coordinate with each other and coordinate well, is important. You gotta get up there, especially on this map, and you got to start taking the fight to the enemy. Don't sit back and let the enemy dictate the terms of the engagement. You either need to force them back, or you're going to end up in a situation where you're going to lose all the caps, the enemy's going to gain all the points, and you're just going to be left to get surrounded. The good news... And bad news now, they've lost another one of their very few precious destroyers. But they have, at the very least, taken out one of the cruisers. So that's going to be a bit more points for their team. And it is going to keep them in the game as they kill yet another cruiser here. But something I want to point out here is that Terp's anti-aircraft has been taking on these catapult and spotter aircraft that have been launched. There are no carriers in this game, but pay attention to the number of planes he's managed to actually shoot down, because that number is actually going to be fairly impressive at the end of this battle. Now, Derp has pushed back into the sea cat point, and he's going to sit here. Normally, I would say if you were in a gunboat destroyer, this would be the best option, or if you were in a lightly armored cruiser, sitting in here just basically preventing the enemy from capping it while your team helps push around would be a good position for you. But Derp is in a heavy cruiser, so this question of what do you do in this situation in a heavy cruiser is a little bit tricky to answer. In this particular case, the Hipper also has torpedoes, and if both of these battleships back here were in the right position... You could, theoretically, assuming you weren't being detected by aircraft, push around and give both of these battleships a surprise dose of butt sex with both sets of torpedoes. You could get one of those epic double side torpedo launches at enemy ships and watch both of them suffer heavy consequences. You might not kill them outright. But you'll certainly make them think twice about their life choices. The enemy team has managed to kill one of their friendly battleships, and that's going to put them really up in the points lead. The good news, however, Derp's team has pushed in to the B cap point, and as you can see here, a good number of Derp's team is now decided to give up on the C cap point, and they're actually all regrouping by going through the B cap point to the A cap point, where they've managed to push a number of the enemy ships at the ACAT point all the way over to the map border. So if they're smart here, their only remaining destroyer will push up into the ACAT point, but it doesn't look like he's going to do that, and contest there and prevent them from getting any points. As Derp comes around this island corner here trying to see if he can get torpedoes onto this Musashi, he is detected. He is being targeted, but it's not necessarily that the person targeting him is detecting him. Now, he gets torpedoes away there as that Musashi starts to speed up. There's the ship that's targeting him, and it looks like the Musashi is as well. Now, this could be a problem. It is a Musashi. It's got those big, glorious 18-inch guns, and he fires off here, but it looks like the island blocked a good number of those shots, so fortunately, those shots don't kill Derp outright. Does manage to set a fire on the Nasashi with his high explosive. The torpedoes from his starboard side all managed to connect all six of those torpedoes, leaving that Nasashi on basically no health. Now the question is, did he put that fire out and did that stop the flooding? It did, but Derp gets shots off there just as that Musashi drops off detectability again and finishes him off for his first kill in the game. And that Musashi is now probably not too happy. In fact, I think we're going to see a little bit of him in chat raging here in the future. In the meantime, Derp has no time to rest on his excellent kill here as he's still being detected by an aircraft and that Udaloy is just punishing him by putting out round after round. Remember, this is a tier 8 non-premium cruiser. It does not come with a heal. So, 
every little bit of health you lose is health that's gone for the match. So Derp is pushing up here. He's going to use the island as cover to try and A, drop off detection, and B, prevent that Udaloy from continuing to harass him in a smokescreen. A little Russian mastered really, really causing problems here. But as he continues to push up, he continues to be spotted by aircraft. However, he is letting his anti-aircraft really get a workout in this battle because he's so far shot down five planes in a German cruiser. Which is kind of impressive considering it's the Hipper. It's not the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg has got excellent AA. The Hipper, not as good. But he's managing to do it here and... I always think it's impressive when you manage to shoot down a lot of planes when there aren't even any carriers involved. Enemy Iowa pops up here. Now pay attention to this Iowa here as Derp panics and starts backing his ship up around that island. This guy is broadside on and you'll notice that his guns weren't even pointed this direction. So Derp fires off a set of torpedoes the question is, is, are these torpedoes going to get around that island? It doesn't look like one of them is going to make it, unfortunately. And I'm not sure if the second one is going to clear the other island. Because Derp backed all the way up around, he did drop off detectability. So he pushes up here. I wouldn't necessarily push up here this way. Just because I want to be able to get my torpedoes off again, depending on what that Iowa is doing. Torpedoes coming in there, those are going to be from the Udaloy, more than likely. There's the Iowa. Now look at this. He's stopped dead stopped broadside on and there's the Alsace oh boy so that Iowa drop has stopped broadside on but look at that his guns aren't even pointed between these two battleships honestly this Alsace and this Iowa should be able to finish Derp off without issue well here comes the Alsace Derp gets himself turned just in time to get torpedoes off that's going to be important here as it drops the Alsace low enough at health as the Alsace goes in for the ram and secures his kill, which he really didn't need to do because it's an Alsace. Although, given the distance and the fact that Derp managed to get his torpedoes away, did result in that Alsace not getting a diehard out of that. In the meantime, his team has really, really caused some serious problems for the enemy team as they've managed to narrow them down to just one destroyer and one cruiser. And we know where the destroyer is located because, well, he's the only one capping. He's capping C. And we know where the cruiser was last seen, so we know it's not him at C. Now, Derp's battle is over there, but because of the ram and because of the secured kill on the IOA, he earned himself a double strike in that game, plus a lovely high caliber award here. But look at that. He shot down six enemy aircraft six catapult fighters and I always find it funny again when you manage to have a high aircraft kill rate in a game with no carriers overall though he did a very very good job lots of torpedo hits considering the torpedoes on the hipper are only six kilometer in range getting that many torpedo hits is either incredibly foolish or incredibly lucky. Sometimes, perhaps, both. But, Derp Amber made the best of a bad situation there when that Alsace showed up. He basically was forced to go for it. No options. Pretty much no way he was going to get away with it, especially because he'd already fired off his starboard side torpedo tubes, and if he was going to dodge the Alsace, he'd have to go past that Alsace on his starboard side, which meant he couldn't get his torpedoes off on the other side. So he wouldn't have been able to destroy him. Now, Friendly Missouri pushing up and through the sea cap point there as that Udaloy effectively runs away. That Udaloy has a bit of a disadvantage here because he's an Udaloy. He's not a sneaky torpedo boat like other destroyers in the game, so he's not going to be able to get torpedoes off and away at this Iowa without that Iowa knowing that he's there. And here come the torpedoes there. Are they going to hit? Nope. The rear ones don't, but those two do. This is a little bit disappointing there. But again, the Iowa 
or I should say the Missouri here, should have absolutely known that that Oodaloo was there. Now, he, a little too fast there on the throttle, drifts out of the sea cap point, so that's going to give the enemy team just that few extra points to stay in the game a little bit longer. Well, a friendly destroyer, and it looks like a cruiser push down to chase down that remaining enemy cruiser. There are only four minutes left in this game, and with two cap points, they're going to win on points regardless of what that cruiser and this Oodaloy can do, especially as the Missouri drops back into the cap. Now, pretty sure the Missouri already used his radar, which is why you can't see that Oodaloy, and at this point, this Oodaloy has probably just had enough and is effectively run off somewhere. That being said though, I would not stay stationary in a cap with an enemy destroyer on this end of the map. Simply because he could come up, bum rush you, and torpedo you, and you don't want to give him the satisfaction of getting more damage, more points, or more kills in this game. The question is, are they going to cap out on points before they kill one of the ships and before they cap, the answer is no, as that cruiser manages to take out the destroyer, the last destroyer on their team, resetting the points just long enough for them to cap C. And of course, then they kill the cruiser, and that's the end of the battle there as they hit a thousand points. Again, 179,000 damage done in that game. 14 torpedo hits, six planes shot down in a game without carriers, eight floodings, three kills there, including a double strike, and thanks to that Alsace, a high caliber award for allowing the ram kill. Top of the team for XP earned at 2,500 base XP, a very, very good game. Enemy Udalay, well, he played a good game too, 1,000 base XP, considering the rest of his team couldn't even break that 1,000 mark. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular news and channel updates, you can do so by following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and the channel, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, we'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.